Namaskar. Namaskar. I have this question because I feel that now at this time there are like many things which are coming from outside where I'm not able to to follow the impulse because society or somehow even people pull me in a di direction or where I feel I'm just not really able to to follow the truth when there's an impulse because I'm kicked out of my flat, for example, or people, they don't talk to me anymore and things like this, where I feel it's very difficult to move inward because I'm getting pulled out to make an action. Otherwise, I'm homeless the next day, for example. It's difficult to really calm down and not make any action because there's a kind of I have to do an action without being in stillness within myself, does it make any sense? <laughs> I think what you've said to me, I've understood. It doesn't make sense. It's nonsense. And that's fine because nonsense is also part of life. But the whole idea is to move from nonsense into sense. So the... The whole thing is twisted around, Francisca. When you actually tune inward, literally, consciously, daily, start to feel that center of the being. When you center yourself and start to feel the center, what happens is, is that you start acting out of the truth of your being. You know, you start acting out of the truth of your being. When you act out of the truth of your being, these circumstances around you, they actually change. So, you may be right now in a transition, in a period where you're gradually learning how to move inward. So it is not that because there's a big mess around that you don't turn inward and that if you turn inward, the mess will not clear up. It is the other way around. Exactly when the mess is happening, the bigger the mess, the more you turn inward. And this is not some theory which is in a pretty book. It isn't. It actually works. It's the key to reducing that suffering. It's the key to not being kicked out of the next apartment. It's the key to tuning in so well to that source within, that you also then are tuned in to the other, because that source is the same, it's the same material. What is your soul or source or your truth, your... whatever that thing is, it's the same in the other. So when it's the same in the other, what do you think happens when you tune in? What do you think happens? You tune into the other and you do not do things which cause those things to happen. Of course there are exceptions, I understand that there are exceptions, but there are few exceptions. The rule is, the more you tune in, the more you tune in, the more you tune into the other and the more joy in your life. So obviously, when someone's kicking you out of your apartment, you can't be sitting there, oh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to sit and chant Om. I'm saying, exactly in that moment, you have to quiet down the ego, quiet down the anger, quiet down the irritation, quiet down the feeling of being hurt and just center yourself and move in and be quiet for a moment. And out of that quiet comes the correct action to take in that moment. So it's the perfect time to do that. And then all that nonsense around you suddenly starts to starts to become sense again. The 
chaos around starts to fall into a sort of an order. It's breathtaking to see that, but you have to do it. Of course, if the guy who wants you or the owner who wants you out of your apartment is knocking on your door, you're not going to be sitting there with a mala chanting mantras. Obviously not. What you're doing is just quieting yourself, centering yourself, having trust in yourself and not in that big egoistic idea of who a person is, but in the truth within, deep, deep down within. So next time something like that happens, or even preventively before, the sadhana is simple. You know what I mean when I say it's a simple sadhana? It's just simple. It is, as much as possible, refer to the soul, to the source, and try to differentiate between the whole ego noise and that impulse of the Truth. So, in this situation in which you are, it's difficult and it's quite tough actually in those moments to collect yourself. But you are a seeker. I mean, from what I know, you have been what I would call almost a professional seeker, someone whose main job is to be a seeker. And that's amazing. It's the way to go. But you also have to find sometimes. And mm -hmm. what you will find is that which is within yourself. That is where you have to go. There's no other place to go in this world. You can run after a hundred gurus, but no guru, no teacher, no master can replace the soul within the guru, the teacher, the master is only pointing you there inside. And the surrender, the surrender, the surrender, the surrender is to the source, to the soul. You bend, you bend, you bend. You don't try to push your agenda through. You bend to the source, you bend to the source, you bend, you bend, you follow what it says. So, right now, in the current circumstance, the best thing is to quiet down, center yourself. You've learned Kriyas, you've been there at, at Immersives, you've learned the Kriyas. Do the Kriyas. Do them, they actually work. So each of these external challenges is to test you, to test how much you can center yourself. You know? That's what it's here for, it's testing you, how much can you center yourself? And the more you go inward, the more you tune in with the Soul, the more you actually feel yourself and go inward, the less life is going to test you. Life is, life is doing it because you are not doing it. You do it, life won't do it. Don't give up, have trust in your... in that inner source of Truth within you. Have that trust, and, and, and go with that. Even if sometimes it feels a little weird, you know? You're not alone, Francisca, you're not alone. You, are, you have your Master within. It's like you're carrying your Master with you on your back, on a backpack, but you can't take that backpack off. It's always with you. So it's beautiful, just tune in, you'll know what to do, but you have to tune in. You have to tune in. People who are tuned in don't get thrown out of their homes, they don't. Maybe they are asked to leave, but they don't get kicked out. So life is telling you, Francisca, tune in more, do it, do it, do it. That's what life is telling you. Thank you. And one more question, because yes. as I'm searching since such a long time, there are a lot of um, spiritual concepts still where this confusion comes in. I think I asked it last time, but I forget the answer somehow um, with the time of the Kali Yoga, that it will be very dark. And then, and then you said, no, it's not the time of the Kali Yoga at the moment. I think the answer is just important for me to help 
to find more trust that there will be better times coming ahead somehow. Francisca, Kali Yuga, Satya Yuga, these are descriptions of states of being. You can't measure time in yugas because you don't know where to start. These are, these are descriptions of how humans live. You may be living in your Kali Yuga now, but your neighbor may not. So, the idea that there is a, a finite period of time when this happens and then it's replaced by that, by a better time and then another era appears, this is not the meaning of the Yugas. This is a very simplistic description of, of what Yugas actually mean. Because there is no beginning and there is no end. The universe has always been and will always be. Big bang this way or that way. Even if there was a bang, it came from somewhere. So there was something before that, so there's no beginning. There's no beginning and there's no end. So the yugas are simply concepts. And as you yourself just said, you're living in concepts. You need to let go of the concepts and you need to just feel yourself. Feel the soul, feel the source. The concepts are things created by human beings to put meaning into what they couldn't understand. To try to control the, the, the chaos, which isn't a chaos. There's a matrix of perfection unfolding in every second. And when you tune in, you can see that unfolding in front of you, you know? You can see it unfolding. So yes, you're right, your head is full of too many concepts. As a spiritual seeker, that is part of the, the journey, to go through the concepts and to leave them behind. So it's not as if you've wasted any time, you know? You have not wasted time. But it's time to leave that behind, because unless you experience it, it is only an idea in someone else's book. And you can only experience it if you take up the sadhana and actually feel the soul and the source. There are very few people in this world who would actually refuse or refute the idea of, a, of something within themselves that is central to them. Everyone feels that there is truth in that, you know, that yes, there is something that is the truth of my being. That's all I'm saying. And it is not as difficult as one can imagine. It's just one has to leave the spiritual concepts behind. One has to leave all of that stuff behind. One can say, okay, this is also a sadhana, so... You know, it's also a concept. If you think it's a concept, you can only argue with me if you have already tried to do this simple sadhana and it hasn't functioned. There's a, there's a woman who asked a question before who has never even met me. Someone else told her about this sadhana. Imagine. And something has started to happen with her. So, I feel that you're on a good way and that it's time to also start to center yourself, go within. Stop imposing all your ideas on your life around you. You know, you also I mean, growing up in, in Europe, in Germany, I mean, you're like one huge big concept on two toothpicks walking around. That's what finally it's all about. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Thinking is not a way to knowing. It's exactly the opposite, it just leads to misery. 
it's only to be used as a tool for planning things or doing simple tasks which need to be organized but it's not a means of knowledge and it's certainly not a means of self knowledge it's a good idea now to start to really tune in do the pendulum kriya and start to tune in start to feel the soul the source and even if you don't feel anything at least you're taking a moment to identify where is your action coming from is it coming from the loud and clamoring and demanding and insisting and pushing and hoping and wanting and willing and intentioning voice of the ego or is it that other thing which is just much more quiet and quietly impulsing so just tune in a bit more things will settle down <laughs>